here. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY home decor crafts. Um, <laughs> How long have I been saying that line? I can't seem to get it right. All right. <laughs> hey there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun home decor DIY crafts coming your way. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on Rustic Farmhouse Valentine's Crafts, so let's get started with project number one. For this project from Walmart, I picked up this chalkboard wood tag. I think it was around five or six dollars. I'll also be using a Dollar Tree candle holder. You'll see that later. And I'm also using this cute X and O Tic Tac toe board set from craftingwithkimber.com. She's the one that made the cute snowman we did in one of our winter uh, crafts. Link will be down in the description box below. You get five X's and five O's because I know you see here probably only four O's, but you get five of each. And then some of the X's and O's have place for this cute little wonky heart. It's not on every X and O, just on some of them, just to, you know, splatter it and make it look cute with hearts. And then I'll be using some of these chunky hearts. I believe it comes in a set of three with like this big one and two smaller ones. And then this love kiss hugs word came from Hobby Lobby and you get like a set of six or nine like two or three of each letter. For my paints today, I'll be using Dixie Belle chalk paint and drop cloth. I'll be using Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress chalk paint. I will be using Dixie Belle uh, chalk paint in the color Barn Red. And then I'm going to mix a couple of paints here, this mud paint chalk paint and then this uh, matte Arteza pink just to get a little bit different shade of pink. And as you can see here, I've got things laid out, how I'm going to, what colors I'm going to paint what. So you get to decide on your own what colors you want to paint everything. But I've kind of got everything split up, what's going to be what color. So in the black, the only thing I'm doing black is the base of the tic-tac-toe board. And then on the uh, drop cloth, I'm going to do one of the words and then a couple of the hearts and stuff. Um, and then in the pink, I will do some of the uh, O's and a word and some hearts and in the red I'll do the X's and some hearts that kind of thing so you can just kind of split it up how you want it all right so I'm just painting a little bit of each one just to kind of show you what we're doing here I was originally going to paint these you know not around the edges but then I decided I'm painting them around the edges I'm also going to be using this little set of 12 mini hearts they're not wonky like these ones but they're super cute again craftingwithkimber.com and I will have the link in the description box down below for you I love these tiny little, they're tiny. <laughs> and then I know this word is white, but I kind of wanted it off white. So of course I'm painting it with the drop cloth. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of use reds and pinks, a little bit of black, and then of course that drop cloth. So it's kind of a nice shade of off white and get everything painted up. The process of the painting, I think took the longest out of all of this. It was, it was the long process. It probably took me Oh gosh, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes to sit and paint all the little pieces and stuff. But it turns out so super cute. You guys are really going to want this set. You really, I mean, I think you should get it. You need it now. <laughs> so, so cute. Yeah, Kim and I kind of went back and forth. You know, I asked her, can we make like a tic-tac-toe set? You know, I wanted X's and O's and my idea. And then she came up with things and I wanted a little wonky. And then she wonkied everything out and the little hearts on the letters. And I mean, it just turned out, both of our vision together turned out so super cute. When you see this in person, I think you're just going to love it. So just finishing up a little bit on the painting with all my pink stuff. You can see how my... Uh, you know, not as bright of a pink, of course. You can see those two colors mixed together. And then I'm coming in, I uh, made a nice shade of pink, and then I'm coming in with the red now on the X's and some of the hearts. So again, just however you want this to be, it will be cute no matter what colors you choose. And then once everything is painted, I watered down some of that little dress, little black dress chalk paint. And using my fan brush, I just dip it in the watered down paint tap off the excess and then I tap my fan brush of course to add little splatters uh, all over what everything I pretty much splattered everything <laughs> and then once that's done I come in and do a little bit of sanding um, you know around the letters kind of make everything look nice and distressed and then once all of that is done here is my ceramic uh, 
candle holder from Dollar Tree and I'm just tracing where I want it to go on the bottom of that tag and then what I what you saw there on the flip side is I cut a piece of cardboard to fit the middle of the circle I'm just going to glue that in with my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and that's just going to give us all that room for gluing and I'm going to use a uh, Gorilla Glue here and just add glue all along the top and around the lip of that candle holder and then put it in you know the circle where I trace so it's nice in the center of our tag here let that set up once that's done of course flip it over and I've copied or traced my tag to add scrap of paper to it and then of course I traced my tic-tac-toe set the bottom plate of that and I'm going to go ahead and round off the corners with my we are memory keepers uh corner punch here and then I'm going to use this dot of paper to cover the big heart front and back. But what I'm going to do is, you can see here about an eighth of an inch in, I'm redrawing that pattern perimeter there. And then that's what I'm going to cut out. And I'll do that for the front and the back. And that way, when you go to glue it on the heart, you're going to see the you know outer edges where we painted it and where we distressed it. Because otherwise, why do we paint it in distress if you're not going to like show that off a little bit? And this is kind of what it'll look like front and back. Okay, so now... Here's the thing, my board of my tic-tac-toe board, it happens sometimes, you can buy wood from hardware store and it happens, it's a little bit kind of wobbly. So what I'm doing is tracing it onto my pink cardstock where it's going to sit. And then I'm gonna cut that portion out of my pink cardstock here. Because what I want is I'm gonna use um, wood glue to glue down my board and clamp it onto that tag so it'll kind of take that little, you know, wobbly out of the board a little bit. Um, and that way it'll be nice and straight. And it's better if you can kind of glue wood to wood. I didn't think it would sit very well if I glued, you know, the wood board to the top of the paper. It can just kind of, you know, come back up and rip or something. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do here in just a minute. Once that's cut out, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna use my sewing machine here. I've used about a size 10 or 11 needle. Uh, my tension set on four, my stitch length is set on four. It's just a little cheapy brother sewing machine. I think I got it for like $49 after Thanksgiving Day sale. And I'm just adding stitching around the perimeters of all my papers. And here's what it looks like just to give it a little bit kind of a country look. And of course, you don't have to do this if you don't want to do that. Once all that's done, I take the open end of my scissor blades and I scrape along the edges just to add a little bit of that rustic texture to it. This is what it looks like with and without, so you can decide what you want. If you're not a sewer, you might like the look of, you know, scraping along the edges just to give it a little something. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue my paper down on to my tag here. And again, I'm only did this because my, my board is a little bit wobbly. If your board sits nice and flat, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And then I'm gluing both papers onto the front and back of my heart. I just needed to come up with something to make that board so it sits flat. Here I am adding wood glue onto it, and this worked perfectly wonderful. If it was a nice flat board, I would have just glued it down with Beacon Fabric Pack Tack onto the paper and had no issue at all whatsoever. But once I get that into place, I'll come down here and you can see once, probably, I don't know if you saw the right end kind of pop up. It's kind of the right top and the lower left that's a little bit wobbly and so once I clamp it in it's going to sit just fine and be nice and flat across my tag. So that was just kind of my solution to come up with it and it would help you too you know if, if you end up with that on some future project or something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue my scrapbook paper down onto my bottom plate here and then go ahead and add my divider on top using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue to glue it all in. Here we go perfect I love how it's looking. And then I've got a gigantic washer here, and I'm going to put that over the edge on that tag just to kind of give it a little design element. And we're going to start gluing hearts down on the left side. I want them to look like I threw them onto that side of the wood tag and, you know, just wherever they lay, that's where I'm going to glue them. Make them look like, you know, scattered hearts across, you know, that side of the tag. Because I wanted this to just be able to set up, you know, obviously in home decor, but have something fun to it. We'll start adding some of our letters into our areas here. And you, if you didn't want to actually play the game, you could just glue your letters down into position however you want it. Doesn't that look so super cute with the little hearts added onto it? And I did opposite colors. So like the O's have red hearts, the pink O's have red hearts, and the red X's have pink hearts, just so you know you could see them a little bit better and look really cute and stand out a little bit. But I just love that cute little design element of that heart. 
perfect. Just finishing all these up. It was a really quick project besides the painting. And then it's hugs and kisses, right? That's X's and O's, so that's why I'm using the hugs and the kisses word. So I'm just kind of gluing one, you know, the hugs on the right side just to give it something over there since I have a bunch of stuff coming over on the left. And I'm just seeing where my point of contact is is where I'm adding glue to my words to, you know, make sure it glues to the heart and the bottom board. Adding a couple little more hearts here. Perfect. And then I'm going to add some rope here because it's a wood tag, right? Tie a little knot in the end. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I've got this 12 by 12 inch piece of thin uh, scrap wood I had left over. I got it at a local hardware store. You could use, you know, any kind of square sign from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use these 12 inch chunky slat boards from Dollar Tree as well, but you could use these thinner ones. They're just a little bit wider. And I chose boards that had knots and everything on them because that I wanted it to look really rustic. Two are left at 12 inches, and in two of them I had to cut down, of course, to fit um, the board so it frames it. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm just marking off where the boards are going to, you know, lay because I want to do just a little bit of painting around the perimeter in the center portion. I start out with Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, and then I decide I don't want that color. And so then I moved to, um, Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint, and then later I decide I don't want that color, and this is all off camera. And then I am just painting a little perimeter like this in black over the top. Now I'm using Waverly Wax Antique uh, Wax mixed with water, Waverly Antique Wax, let's say that a third time, mixed with water to do a little inexpensive staining on the wood. I want it really, really light because I just want those knots and that kind of thing to really show on this wood. I think they look really great. I just got lucky one time I went in and they just had some boards that just had this lovely character to them all. You know, I picked all up the ones they had. And once I kind of stain everything and it dries, I'll go ahead off camera and sand them up and, you know, make them look a little bit more lighter and distressed. And I'm going to use this tight bond wood glue and go ahead and glue my framing around my board here. Again, any Dollar Tree sign would work. You might want to do a rectangular board or stay with the square board. You might not want framing at all. Or they have round signs now I've seen at Dollar Tree that are plain wood that already have the framing around it. You could use those or square signs that already have the framing around it. However you want to go about this, you know, maybe a smaller, whatever you want. You know, of course, this is just an idea to give you some inspiration to get going. So once I get everything glued on here, just about done... And it was really easy to do. This project was easy, and I actually just love it. Sometimes the easier projects are just gorgeous. They don't have a whole lot to them, but they're gorgeous. And of course, once the wood's in place, I'll go ahead and clamp these off camera for about half an hour. Here's where you can see my other stages of paint, my white and my black that I ended up with. And for this next part of the project, I've made a free printable for you. Now, I made it in sections, so you can print it off this way if you just want to print it onto some scrapbook paper and frame it or I've separated it and so like what I did is I print the heart on cardstock and then I do the design portion of it uh, through my cutting machine in vinyl and I did make a PNG for you you're gonna have to clean out the letters but you do have a PNG or if you don't like the heart and you just want to use the quote or you just want to use the heart you know I just separate it all for you so you can use whatever portion of this that you want okay so here's my heart. I printed it off. You can see the texture of the scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to use black cardstock first and then this white, it's kind of off-white actually, cardstock scrapbook paper. And here's my vinyl quote. And so that's how I'm going to layer it, okay? But first step before we do that, you all know I need to sew around it. So I'm going to sew around my uh, cardstock, my black and my white here because I think that's just going to add a little bit more texture to our already rustic looking sign here. 
And I wanted this Valentine to, you know, be centered around God. You know, I just thought, I think God is the greatest Valentine. He's the greatest love. So that's why I chose this and the scripture that I chose, I think it very much, you know, fits in with Valentine's. So once all that is sewn in everything, I'm taking watered down paint from my first project and just doing a little bit of splatters over where the heart is. You can see what it looks like here. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, open into my scissor blades and we're going to just scrape along the edges on both of these. Kind of add in that texture. Just really lightly. I don't do it real heavy. Sometimes I'm real heavy handed, sometimes I'm not. And then we'll go ahead and get our layers glued down here, starting, of course, with our black cardstock. And it is cut a little bit short. There's about a quarter inch all the way around where you can see that black paint. <laughs> use my brayer and smooth it in here and then I'm going to add my vinyl on to my heart here again I have made the quote part is regular pdf and then there's a png if you want to put it through your cutting machine but again you have to take out the letter the insides of the letters and the background and stuff okay so that looks like, and then I went ahead off camera and went ahead. I wasn't going to splatter it with the vinyl on, but I decided the vinyl looked too plain. So once I got that vinyl in, I kind of went in and splattered that a little bit. All right, with that same color paint. And we're going to go ahead and get this portion glued on here. Perfect. Use my brayer to smooth it down. And then once I do that, this project is complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, I'm using this plaid fabric I get at Walmart, and I'm going to cut 10 hearts out of it. And then I've got batting also from Walmart. You can use felt, and we're going to cut 10 more hearts out of that. So in essential, we're going to use five hearts. You have fabric front and back, and then two pieces of batting or felt in the center. The hearts are a little bit smaller than the fabric hearts, the felt hearts, but you could just use one piece of batting if you want. And then I'm using this felt that I get at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to cut five envelopes out of that. And it's a really easy envelope. You just We're just going to kind of fold it up and down just like that. That's the best we're going to do with it. So for this, I do have free printables for you. Now, the hearts, really, I just trace this. And then I have one, you know, the next heart down is a little bit smaller. But you could just do your own. But you may want the, the printable to the envelope because that might make it easier for you. Okay, I'm going to also use this cotton twine, macrame twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use one of these pom-pom makers, the medium, also from Dollar Tree. And I've got some yarn here I picked up at Walmart. Their yarn prices finally went back down. And it's this hometown uh, lion brand yarn. The first one is Providence Pink. I'll be using that shade. And I'll be using this Hoboken Honey. And then I will be using this Tampa Spice. Okay, those are my three shades. And then whatever hearts you want. These are wood hearts from Dollar Tree and some crochet thread from Dollar Tree. Yes, we're making a garland. I'm going to use this medium pop. I'm going to show you how to do it in case, you know, you're new at this. You just kind of open it up so it looks like this. Cut off, you know, a nice long piece of yarn and lay it to the side. And then you're going to take your yarn on one of these pieces and you're just going to wrap it around. Okay? You just like your, it's like a letter C or a letter N, or upside down, whatever. You're going to wrap it around till your yarn here kind of it comes straight across that center opening there. It's kind of straight across. See, like that? Straight across. It'll bubble up, but that's okay. And then cut it off, and then fold it back into the pom-pom maker. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is thick yarn, so you don't need as much as the thinner yarn. So that makes it nice. Cut it off, and fold it back in. Perfect. Now, see these little grooves here on both sides? We want to cut. You want to hold these down. Hold that handle down so it doesn't pop up. Take some little sharp scissors and cut right between the grooves there. Right between the grooves. Can I say that word right? Right between? Right between the grooves. Both sides. Make sure you hold both those ends together. Don't let it pop up or your little yarn pieces after you cut it are going to go flying everywhere. you got to hold it together. And then take that piece of yarn we cut earlier and come right between those grooves. See that? And then pull it up nice and tight till it almost pops into place. See? 
You know it's into place because the space between the yarns, you know, really narrow there. And then just go ahead and tie it in a knot all the way down. Pull it down to get the center, tie it in a knot, and then open your little handles here. You pull this apart, and out pops your pom-pom, and then you put it back together just like this. Folding it in, folding it in, just like that. And then once you've got your pom-pom, you just, you know, trim it to your heart's desire. And this is what a pretty one all trimmed up looks like. Gorgeous. I'm going to have 10 pom-poms here, okay? I'm having four of the pink. You choose whatever colors, of course. And then three of the tan and three of the red. So 10 pom-poms total. Now for my hearts, for each of the hearts, you want five pieces of twine. And we're just going to make like a little loop here. Just It's probably about a six or seven inch piece of twine. Make a little knot in a loop. I'll freeze it here so to the right you can see what it looks like. And what we're going to do is sandwich this little loop in between the felt and you don't want to lay it flat so that the loop is like horizontal. You want to turn it up so that the side of the twine is facing upward. See what I mean? And I'll show you how it looks in a minute. And if you only use one piece of felt here, that's okay. You can still sandwich it in between, you know, your felt and your fabric. Once you get that laying right, go ahead and um, glue your felt or batting pieces together. See how it looks on the side? Your loop is kind of sideways, okay? That's so it, it'll help move on our twine easier. And then if you're a gluer, just go ahead and glue the, your whole thing together. I'm just kind of doing little dots of glue because I'm going to go in and add some sewing onto my heart, okay? But you glue it really well if you're just a gluer, okay? Now for the envelope, you're just going to fold it up like this, and you're going to fold it up to where, see where that bottom of that flap is to that point of the top flap? There's like a half inch there. Just that's how far you're going to fold it up. And you're just going to glue that whole thing together because we're not going to open the envelope. Just glue it all down really good, whether you're a glue or a sewer. And now I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine. I'm going to glue around the heart and I'm going to glue on my envelope down the sides and on the flap. Okay? So here I am just kind of gluing it or sewing it. Oh my gosh, am I gluing or sewing here? <laughs> sewing it. So you'll see what it looks like here in a minute when I'm done. And this is just all decorative because you guys know I always give you a gluing or a sewing option in case those of us out there that love to do the sewing, those of you that just want to glue, that's perfectly wonderful. It's going to look beautiful either way. Okay? So this is what the envelope looks like down the sides. You can see, and then when the flaps close, you can see that little bit of decorative sewing. And then, of course, now I'm sewing my heart. Now, I'm not going to sew over the twine because that big knot's there, and I'm not going to get the needle through it. It still looks perfectly cute. I'll show you what it looks like here in just a minute. But it just adds that little bit of, you know, texture we like. But gluing will be perfect. So you can see here, see where I didn't sew over the twine? That's wonderful. It still looks great. And you will see that little bit of batting or felt around the edge. I designed it that way. If you don't like that, you can, you know, make sure you close it up completely. And now I'm just taking my fingernail and just kind of, you know, rubbing it along the edges so I can fray the fabric up a little bit. So when we're done, I've got five hearts here and four envelopes, okay? And I'm going to pick out, out of those hearts from Dollar Tree, four wood hearts. And I'm going to use this mud paint in the blush shade. It's just kind of a, a pinky peachish rose shade <laughs> if you can imagine that and I'm just going to paint I do front and back I'm going to paint my little hearts now if you wanted to use just the pink or the red hearts out of the Dollar Tree hearts you're good to go no painting required I'm going to add just a little glue to the top part of the heart and add it to the top flap of our envelope and so basically half of your heart it will be hanging off of your envelope okay top half is glued on only See here, I'm adding the glue, just the top half, and then let the rest bottom hang off. Once that's done, let's move on to our garland. This is really long, so this main piece is 93 inches, and I've already taped it off where I want all my elements to go. And then I'm doing a double twine garland. You don't have to, but this piece measures about 80 inches. I just thought it would look cute kind of double, but you can totally put it all on one piece. And so for now, this is the end. It's about a oh, 10 inches or so on each end. I've just got it taped. It's not tied into a loop for hanging yet because we need to get our heart on there first okay so I'm just going to come down one side and I'm going to go ahead because once you kind of if we when we add the second string in there make a big knot it's a pretty big knot to slide the small you know opening of that twine over so I'm going to add those into the spaces I want what I do is lay this on the floor first and then I measure out probably about four inches in between each item 
and then I add a little piece of tape there so I know exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to, you know, add my five hearts on here, of course, as you're seeing right now. And now for the second twine, if you want to do a double layer, you're going to add it into right next to the loop of the, the first twine. See where that is? And then you're going to take that first twine and you're going to wrap it around that hanging piece of the second twine and make a knot around it. So this is kind of what it would look like and you can trim those extra ends off. You're going to do that on both sides. You get the first knot and then bring your second string over so it measures, you know, it's drooping, you know, the same droop as the first one and then tie your knot. And so now you can see I've kind of taped up that second twine up there to get it out of the way and now I've got uh, five long pieces of regular twine here about 24 inches and I'm going to bring it through the loop of our heart up over that first twine and I'm going to tie it into place so that it doesn't you know move along the garland uh string here gar along that macrame twine and then just tie a little bow here as you can see just like that okay just tying a little bow we're going to do that on all five hearts so again you just put it through the loop of the heart and bring it up and around that main twine and then tie it in a knot and then add a little bow for decor and i you know i do long twine here so that you know the tails of the hearts hang down really cute and nice of course we're going to do that all the way across here so as we're finishing up the hearts, my thought process on the double garland was I just could picture it like the bottom could be like hanging, you know, in front of a fireplace and the top that will house the pom-poms could kind of be, you know, up and amongst your decor a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it's stupid. You might just want to go with one, one uh, main rope for your garland, do it all together. But let's move on to the envelopes using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I'm just going to place them in and fold it over the macrame cord there as you see. Nice and easy. So I'm just going to take my string right across that top flap that was pulled up right that we when we folded it up and glued it and then all along that top flap and that heart fold it over the uh, cording and then glue it in place just like that so your uh, envelope is definitely not going to move anywhere because you are gluing it on there just nice and easy perfect 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 I like how it turns out we get these all into position here and you might like it just like this, you know, uh, you might not want to add pom-poms, anything like that, just to give you inspiration. And you, I would love to see any of you guys are in my Facebook group to see if you try this garland, how yours turned out. So make sure you share some photos. So now on that upper twine, got that into position, I'm going to start tying on the pom-poms and they are going to rest in between each of the hearts so wherever you know they get tied on so it'll still look like one garland but you've got two again I don't know if it's a dumb idea but my brain was thinking it might be kind of cool so just tying them into place if you decide you only want to use one cording for your garland just you know tie your pom-poms one in between each of you know the hearts and the envelopes there okay and I'm just tying them just like regular double knot Going all the way across, again, 10 pom-poms, alternating the colors. And then what we'll do is we'll trim off those ends right close to that macrame cord. So um, it'll look like your pom-pom is floating on there. You can't even tell where we tied it on. It, it looks pretty neat. Okay, so once I get them tied on, I'm going to come around. And I just do like one more little knot on them, and then I cut them off right close, just like I said, to... The pom-pom itself, you can see they just, you can't even tell, I mean, barely, I don't think where, you know, we cut the little tails off. They just look like they're floating on that twine. I think it looks pretty cool. But see, it looks kind of neat with two, two ropes, right? Two main garlands. It's kind of my thought process. I don't know. You have to let me know in the comments down below if you'd want one or two main ropes for your garland. And I'm just coming in the last little bit, and I want to add just a little bit of that Dollar Tree uh, crochet um, ribbon on there. I just think it just adds a little bit of kind of a a kind of a nice country, maybe romantic look. I don't know, but it just gives it a little something else. I went back and forth whether I even wanted that on there because I was like, I really like it like it is, but I'm like. And then I'd walk by a few minutes later. I'm like, oh, but it really needs something. But I really like it like it is. I really argued with myself. But in the end, the crochet uh, trim one. So there you go. And I am tying this crochet on to the twine of the, you know, hearts and envelopes only. Because I just want the pom-poms on that front twine. With that said, that makes this project complete. 
So I hope you enjoyed all of these projects that we worked on today. Leave me a comment down below and I have a few questions for you. Number one, of course, let me know which project was your favorite. And number two, would you have done this garland in a two strand one like I did or would you keep it all in one? And number three, was my eye just my idea just kind of dumb? <laughs> let me know down below, of course. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you walked in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. If you don't think you're going to make it, there are multiple stories of survival throughout the very words of the Bible. God's words. God's breath of life into the words of a book that is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing. This alone should bring about strength in your very situation you are facing. If God saw those people through it, then why wouldn't he do it for you? They were ordinary people just like you. So deep down in your heart and mind, you know one bit of information that will help you face this obstacle. You know one thing that will get you through. With God, you can face tomorrow. With His strength, you'll get through this. With His guidance, you'll get through this. With His love, you'll get through this. If you feel like no one is listening or comprehending the very pain you are feeling, you have it wrong. God hears you. God sees you. God died on the cross for you and felt the very pain of human existence. He knows exactly what you are going through. He walks through the desert with you. He stands in the fire with you. He lays in the pit with you. He will calm the storm for you because he lives in you. Don't let your heart dwell in the dark places of misery and despair. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Allow your heart to reach out and grab what the enemy is trying to intend as evil and separation from God and give it to the Holy One as He repurposes it into the very strength of this new light of hope for your life. You can do this. You've got this. God has a different plan of redeeming grace for your life. So accept it. Hold on to it. Hold on to the hope of this moment and feel the light of His warmth around your soul as you face tomorrow. Hang on. A new day is dawning. I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.